geology class, I hope you are all well. Literally, this is take 11 at the Screencastify business. Um, right before this COVID-19 health crisis, we were learning how to um, read um, information about earthquakes based on seismogram tracings, um, as you see here, and time travel graph, which relies on seismogram um, time in order to determine distance to an earthquake. So a quick review, we had the SP interval here, which is again the difference it takes from the P wave, which arrives faster, and the S wave, which arrives slower, that is called lag time. Um, with that lag time, we could measure a distance along this time travel graph, um, or a height rather, of time, and take that time and measure it between the curve and where it touches the curve parallel to the lines, we can get a specific distance to the earthquake. Our last thing we did right before our separation was trying to triangulate information about three cities um, using the distance from a clock time slash seismogram tracing. One city by itself, in the case St. Louis, the earthquake could be anywhere along this outer circle I just traced, so not very useful. Even something smaller like Seattle by itself would just say, well, the earthquake's somewhere along the circle. But when you start adding more than one city, as in the case of Berkeley and St. Louis, we could now say the earthquake's either here or here. And when we add Seattle, we can now triangulate it to one specific location. So in this case, the epicenter would be here. Again, the epicenter is the point on the surface um, where the earthquake is felt and detected. Um, this spot is directly above the focus, which is the point along the fault underneath the ground where the earthquake actually occurred. Now, similar to what we did here with three cities, we're going to do that with our final skill, which is going to be doing something called a nomogram. And it's going to rely on the amplitude um, of the zigzag seismogram tracing. Again, the height, the taller the zigzag, the closer the earthquake is to, this, to the detection station um, and or the stronger the earthquake is. So bigger lines mean closer and or stronger. Um, so with that, you're going to plot information about three cities. So I use Las Vegas as an example. You'll get two more cities in addition um, that you'll be plotting and where again, all three intersect, that will now tell us how strong the earthquake was or what was the magnitude. So I'll do that by highlighting some stuff here. Um, so if I want to find uh, the SP interval, I trace my line over, I drop it down in not a perfect line, but it shows up about 64 seconds. So now that I know it's 64 seconds, I can put a 64 second mark on my graph. And then with that, I'll put a 64 second where it interse intersects the curve. And then that point can be dropped down and determine a distance. So note this curve is already done for you. Um, you don't have to measure anything in between the curves. You simply match up the X and Y coordinates. So if I were to insert a line so you can see this more clearly, we can see at 64 seconds, we have a point right there, in which case, if I fatten it up for you, um, you'll see it a little bit better. And I'll insert another point just the same way intersects with distance, and then we can plot information on the nomogram above. So if I drop this down to here, and I fatten the line a little bit, we can see roughly around 620, 625 kilometers based on our 64 seconds is where the earthquake distance occurred away from the station. So I'll go back to my drawing. I'll put a dot now at 620. Note this is a log scale, so the increments aren't the same. Um, so be careful when you're plotting this for all your stations. So my second dot is the accurate dot. So now that I know 620 is my distance, I can now worry about the amplitude. So I'm going to find the amplitude. I'm going to draw it again across. And if it were a straight line, I'd round up about 100. I'll now put a dot at the amplitude, which again is the height of the zigzag. Put it at 100, and where these two points crisscross, as you see here, it's about a 7.1 earthquake. Um, and you do that for two more cities and can uniquely do it. Must all three intersect or it won't be valid. 